There are more CCTV cameras per person in the UK than any other country in the world except China. Now new advances are transforming those cameras and how they're being used because they're plugging in so-called live facial recognition technology and that recognises human faces and basically catalogues them. The technology has been trialled over the last few weeks across London. Thousands of pedestrians have had their faces scanned by van-mounted cameras and then cross-checked against a list of 5,000 profiles of people who are wanted for serious crimes. So far, one person has been arrested. Some people have expressed their concerns that this is an invasion of our privacy. Last week, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner Cressida Dick responded to those critics. I and others have been making the case for the proportionate use of tech in policing. But right now, the loudest voices in the debate seem to be the critics. Sometimes highly inaccurate and or highly ill-informed. And I would say it is for the critics to justify to victims of crimes why police shouldn't use tech lawfully and proportionately to catch criminals. So that is Cressida Dick. While the current trials are only happening in London, a leaked Home Office document suggests 10 other police forces may be introducing the technology soon. So we need to think about this. You tell us whether you fear that the cataloguing of all our faces while we go shopping is a good or bad development. 08000 288 291. Email vine at bbc.co.uk. Joined by Sean Berry, co-leader of the Green Party and candidate to be mayor of London, who is concerned. And also in Oxford, Professor Anthony Gleese, intelligence and security expert, I'll start with you, Anthony Gleese. You, you basically think we, if we've got the tech, we should use it. Absolutely. Facial recognition is a highly suitable biometric tool for identifying unknown, hitherto unknown suspects. We uh, accept fingerprint recognition. We accept vehicle license plate recognition. We accept passport recognition. We accept the interception of electronic Texts and messages. Why on earth not visual data well, let's that's get, electronically Let's committed. get the answer from Sean Berry. Why on earth not? It's very clear that this is fundamentally different in character to all of those things. You can't go out in public uh, without having your face on show. If we were expecting people to walk down each street and, and scan their fingerprints to be allowed to do it, we'd all be saying, no, no way, that's not allowed. The fact that facial recognition is, is passive and that it can be attached, as you were saying, to almost any camera that already exists, and we have a lot of cameras, it means it poses a, a bigger risk to, to human rights than, than basically any other technology, and it needs legislation. Um, I would like to see it banned, but I'm very happy to take that debate into Parliament and for us to have a strong debate. Cressida Dick herself, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, has said... All, as well as what she was saying on the clip just now, she said it should never be for the police to decide where the slider should sit on the balance between rights and security. And that is really important. This is a debate we should be having in Parliament. We need new laws for this very new and very intrusive technology. Yeah, well, Anthony, if you're walking through the centre of Manchester, you've not given anyone permission to take down your name. Well, I, I think that's got nothing to do with anything at all. Well, if that's you have that's a, exactly what they're doing, well, isn't it? If, well, that's got to do with quite a lot of laws that, we already in have. Order, in order for the facial recognition system to work properly, it needs a massive amount of data. So what the cops are doing is collecting the data, which means that the recognition techniques can become more accurate. This is, of course, in its uh, infancy at the moment, but it will transform the way in which crime is dealt with in this country, and it will mean that it's not criminals who have a chance of escaping justice, but the victims who have a chance of getting justice. Sean. And Sean, Sean Berry is quite wrong about that. I don't disagree with her about the need for legislation, particularly if you've got a government, and dare I say it, a Home Secretary, who may not be particularly trusted to use this stuff r wisely but where it is being used it will keep us all they, safe it's it's think used. about it practically sean if if they've got a camera trained on a high street in let's say basingstoke they're, they're, the photos they've got to match against the live faces are going to be the photos of criminals no this is and let me take this away from hypothetical and talk about trafford shopping center
centre where the police there were working with the owners of the shopping centre and feeding it with the pictures of shoplifters, people who were missing people. These are not serious criminals. In the King's Cross area, um, I'm a Camden councillor, and there's a new area been built um, just north of King's Cross Station. The CCTV cameras there were fitted with facial recognition with absolutely no democratic oversight whatsoever. But to get a shoplifter think, sounds OK. We think they were looking for homeless people because um, people who, um, who had previously been seen begging there would walk into the area, not do anything wrong, they weren't begging, they were just walking in the area. They were being intercepted remarkably quickly. Really? Now, both those things are, were illegal and have been stopped. And to be, uh, being homeless. We need rules that govern what circumstances this could possibly That's a very be interesting... used. If, or if not, to look at the impossibility of using it in a way that doesn't breach human rights and getting a proper ban in it's place. It's an example, a homelessness example, Anthony. Well, I, I can't comment on that, but what I can say, and I'm sure Charles Berry would like to comment on two very recent cases out of the, the media, uh, where CCTV showed a chap called Joseph Trevor raping, strangling and stabbing 18-year-old Megan Newton, uh, where CCTV in London, Sean Berry wants to be boss of it, catched caught saboteurs spraying noxious, foul-smelling liquid into a London restaurant. CCTV imagery keeps us safer. <laughs> yes, people may make the wrong call from time to time, and yes, they're a false positive, and yes, people of colour and women are less easily identified than white males. I understand all of that, and that all of it needs to be sorted. But the use of big data to keep us safe is what the British people want. They're fed up with criminals getting away. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, shoplifting is not a minor crime. Again, we, those of us who use Twitter will have seen those shots of, I think it was a curry shop being raided by a load of thugs just pulling things out recorded on CCTV and therefore oh, potentially so capturable. Every example you've just given me is completely different than the question that we've been asked to address. Those are incidents of crimes happening images being captured and those cri those pictures, which are of people doing crime, so they are pictures of, of criminals, being then used as evidence. This is something that, Jeremy, against. you do quite often, Excuse I believe, me. don't you? You, <laughs> you yourself capture images well, of people. Well, that's on my bike. Drive right. it, and, that's, and, then, and then you're perfectly legitimately able to do that, send that to the police, who can then use it as evidence to try and catch people. Facial recognition surveillance on the street is a completely different beast here, and that's why we need a proper debate and we need big... We any proper legislation to be put through by our elected representatives who will then insist on things like proper democratic oversight, accountability, transparency in how it's being used. At the moment, it's just Wild West out there. The police are using it with no oversight whatsoever. Thank you both very much, Sean Berry, co-leader of the Green Party and candidate to be Mayor of London. And Professor Anthony Gleese, very different views on...